Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get you guys geared up. The stuff you need is a helmet, a headlamp, you're going to put your fresh batteries in the headlamp, knee pads, and gloves. These are the limestones of the Edwards group that the cave is carved out of. These are Cretaceous marine limestone deposits, and as we've discussed earlier, these are formed from shallow water marine environments. If you look at it macroscopically here with the naked eye, it's actually difficult to see any macroscopic features in there, such as the kind of fauna we might expect to see in these limestones. But if we were to look at it with a thin section of a microscope or a really good hand lens, we'd actually be able to see microscopic critters, single-celled organisms called foraminifera that secreted a calcite uh, skeleton, lived in the oceans during the Cretaceous. They'd be the dominant feature of these rocks, along with things like bivalves and gastropods and various forms of uh, algae that secreted a calcareous uh, framework as well. So again, a foraminifera dominated uh, fauna in these shallow water marine environments. And then as you step back and take an overarching view of this, this is almost like the cross-section in the karst terrain that we looked at, right? We've got the soil on top and vegetation on top, as my interpretation of it. And then you have a series of uh, flat-lying horizontal strata, you know, about a half a meter to a meter thick. And you can see some of the soil has actually been infiltrating downward. So here are the limestone strata that the cave is formed in. And what do you notice about the appearance of this limestone? It varies in color, we won't worry about that. But how about all the, uh, how about all the openings? How about all the lines, what we call fractures, right? Anytime that the rock is sort of separate from the rock adjacent to it, <coughs> it's a fracture, it's an opening. So a lot of these fractures. As we go along horizontally, there's a lot of fractures vertically. Maybe you could see now why the international symbol on geologic maps for limestone is sort of this block pattern, right? The strata going this way and all these blocks. It's because the limestone tends to be very fractured like this. So we've got openings both this way and that way, and that's always important to think about because when we're thinking about pathways of preferred uh, permeability, right, an orientation when the pore spaces are more well connected and larger, than in other places, that's going to be a preferred flow pathway. So those bedding planes that separate one strata from another and also the fractures that go vertically, those are all potential pathways of high permeability that if we continue to engender dissolution through this carbonic acid model that we talked about earlier, we have ways of making those small fractures into larger fractures, into pipes, into conduits, and all of a sudden it's large enough that we're in it, then all of a sudden it's a cave.